Mr. President. Senator Gazelka. I move that further proceedings under the roll call be dispensed with and the Sergeant of Arms be instructed to bring in the absentee members. On that motion, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. Motion prevails and the Sergeant of Arms will bring in the absent members. Members, please stand for the prayer. Today's chaplain is Reverend John Elfson from Rosemount, Minnesota. And following the prayer, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful, loving God, bless all those men and women who hold office in the government of Minnesota, governor, house, and senate, that they may perform their work in a positive spirit of wisdom, courage, and justice. Assist them to know that each one of them is called to serve the people of Minnesota as followers of your divine will. Restore, O oh God, what is broken in the world. Quell the rush of violence between peoples and nations. Break down dividing walls and promote growth for the sake of the common good. We pray for parents, caregivers, teachers, and others who shape children's lives. Guide them as they lead children to, the, to adulthood, teaching respect for each other, and keep them from harm's way. In your mercy, O loving God, we pray for those in need, for those who lack meaningful employment or stable housing, for those who live with mental illness, for those who have chronic pain, and all who are grieving, sick, or injured. Give to the lands and seas of life, O God, of your continuing creation. Water the flowers of springtime and nurture the growing crops. Bless all who protect your plants and animals. Our loving God, remember those who struggle with addiction, depression, grief, or illness. We pray for your guidance in their search for proper treatment. Loving God, visit our jails and prisons with your forgiveness and steadfast grace. Finally, O oh God, we pray for all those serving in the United States military. Keep them safe and out of harm's way. Continue to be present with their families in this time of separation. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Reverend. Yeah, thanks. Nice to be here. The secretary will take the roll. Senators Abler, Anderson B, Anderson P, Bach, Benson, Bigham, Carlson, Chamberlain, Champion, Clausen, Cohen, Swazinski, Dames, Dibble, Dreheim, Dietzik, Eaton, Eichhorn, Eakin, Friends and Friends, Gazelka, Goggin, Hall, Herr, Hayden, Hoffman, Housley, Howe, Ingerbritson, Isaacson, Jasinski, Jensen, Johnson, Kent, Kiffmeyer, Klein, Coran, Lane, Lang, Latz, Limmer, Little, Marty, Matthews, Miller, Nelson, Newman, Newton, Osmick, Pappas, Pratt, Rarick, Ralph, Rest, Rosen, Rood, Senjum, Simonson, Sparks, Thomasoni, Torres, Ray, Utke, Weber, Westrom, Weger, Wickland. A quorum is present. Members will begin on the agenda today with the third order of business, messages from the House. The Secretary will read the messages. Mr. President, I have the honor to announce the passage by the House of the following Senate files herewith returned. Senate files number 131, a bill for an act relating to health care. Senate file number 584, a bill for an act relating to health licensing. Patrick D. Murphy. 
Mr. President, I have the honour to announce the passage by the House of the following House files herewith transmitted House file numbers 1997, 554, and 1500. Patrick D. Murphy, Chief Clerk, House of Representatives. There's no further action required on those messages. Moving to the fourth order of business, first reading of House bills, the Secretary will read one additional House file number. House file number 1500, a bill for an act relating to transportation. House file 1500 will be referred to the Committee on Transportation. Uh, this bill, along with the other two House files listed in the agenda, will be given their first reading and referred as indicated. Moving to the fifth order of business, reports of committees. Pursuant to Joint Rule 2.03, Senate File 998 will be referred to the Committee on Rules and Administration. Moving to the eighth order of business, introduction and first reading of Senate bills. Members listed in today's introduction calendar are Senate Files 2798 through 2815. These Senate files are given their first reading and referred as indicated. Moving to the ninth order of business, motions and resolutions. There are several authors' motions listed in the agenda. We'll take these authors' motions as one motion. All those in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion prevails. Continuing under motions and resolutions, Senator Isaacson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I move that Senate File 746 be withdrawn from the Committee on Transportation and Finance Policy. Uh, and given a second reading and placed on general orders, I have spoken with the chair and the majority leader about that, and we're all good. All right. On the Isaacson motion, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion prevails. Senator Benson. Oh. Mr. President, Senator Benson for hold, Senator hold Miller. On. Senator Benson, hold on one moment. Members, Senate File 746 will be given its second reading. Continuing under motions and resolutions, Senator Benson. Mr. President, Senator Benson for Senator Miller moves that Senate File 973 be withdrawn from the Committee on Finance and be referred to the Committee on Rules and Administration. This is the rare disease bill. It is a late bill, Mr. President. Any discussion on the Benson motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion prevails. Senate Resolution Numbers 82 and 83 will be referred to the Committee on Rules and Administration. Remaining under motions and resolutions, Senator Gazelka. Mr. President, pursuant to Rule 26, I designate the following orders be made for uh, immediate consideration. The special order sheet, uh, members, is on your desk. Members, the first bill under consideration is number 98 on general orders. It is Senate File 75, Senator Osmick. Thank you, Mr. President. Senate File 75 is a second distracted driving bill to make the Senate floor this session. Uh, mine is a little bit different than Senator Newman's. Mine has three different components. Uh, we have heard stories at every stop of this bill uh, of people that have been impacted by distracted driving in Minnesota and the use of cell phones and its impact on the lives of individuals. Senate File 75 is to put some teeth into the laws that we currently have. Senate File 75 has three main Senator components. Senator Osmick, hold on one moment, please. Members, members, it's very loud in here. I'm having trouble hearing Senator Osmick. If we can keep, please keep it down. Thank you. Senator Osmick. Thank you, Mr. President. Senate File 75 has three major components. One is it instructs the commissioner to include distracted driving as part of driver's education training in Minnesota. It's not necessarily called it out right now, and there's certainly portions of the driver's ed manual that talks about distracted driving, but nothing says loving like including it in uh, the driver's training that we have for kids. Kids especially need to understand how dangerous using cell phones is, how digging for the last Cheeto at the bottom of the bag or yelling at somebody in the back seat is a problem. And we need to get serious because we are killing people on the roads of Minnesota. The second part is texting while driving. Right now, members, uh, the first offense is $50 and a petty misdemeanor. I don't think that gets the attention of 
people who are texting while driving. Uh, the uh, bill that I have, 70, number, Senate File 75, changes it to 150 on the first penalty, 300 on the second penalty if you're found texting while driving, and on the third offense, it'll be $500, and we are going to suspend your license for 30 days to get your attention. I appreciate how uh, this has been changed as we've gone through the legislative process. Originally, I was capturing or taking your cell phone away from you. Uh, that had problems, and I knew it. But our, I believe our friends in the Judiciary Committee added this component, and I have fully supported it, because if you are texting while driving, and this is very dangerous, Senators, if you are texting while driving and you have found, been found for the third and subsequent offenses, it's time to get your attention. And taking your license and making you go get a work permit, because you can get a work permit, we will take your license and suspend it for 30 days, you can still go to work by getting a work permit, it's time to get your attention to stop texting while driving. It's as simple as that. And then the third component, members, is the meat of the bill, which is if you are found to be non-hands-free and you get into an accident using your cell phone, you're going to be treated like a drunk driver. So if you injure someone or you kill someone, we're going to have some of the stiffest penalties in the nation. And if you kill someone, it is a felony. It will be some of the toughest regulations on dis texting or uh, uh, distracted driving in the nation. So, members, I'd appreciate a green vote on this. This has gone through a number of committees. Uh, I appreciate a number of senators that help, have helped out. Uh, I know this one will come as a shock. I appreciate and Judiciary Senator Latz helping make this a better bill. His eyes are very wide open at this point. But seriously, uh, Senators, this is a very good bill. It is complementary to Senator Newman's bill. It is not in opposition. The only component that is common is how we define non-hands-free cell phone use when you're driving a car. So with that, members, I'll answer any questions and, and stand for any comments. Discussion on Senate File 75. Senator Bigham. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, and thank you, Senator Osmond, for this bill. Um, I appreciate being a co-author on it. Members, I rise in support of this bill. Um, as it was said, this is complementary to uh, a couple weeks ago, the hands-free bill. And time and time again, we have constituents where there's been a tragedy, whether it's a death or an injury, and justice does not meet what our current um, uh, laws have on it. So I appreciate the leadership and the diligence and the thoughtfulness that this body put through on this bill. And uh, I look forward to supporting it and encourage a green vote on it. Further discussion on Senate File 75. S Senator Western. Mr. President, uh, Senator Osmick, uh, if, this, if the author would yield, please. Senator Osmick will yield. Senator Western. Uh, Mr. Pre Mr. President, uh, Senator, uh, just wanted to clarify, you said any texting, and then you talked about uh, hands-free. Uh, can you clarify for us if your intent is all texting, whether it's hands-free texting or calling that would be prohibited, or is your intent to be limited to just using a cell phone or texting with the cell phone in your hand and not using hands-free that would be subject to your penalties. Senator Osmond. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator, Senator Westrom, uh, the definitions, again, are the same as far as what is hands-free use of a cell phone between the Newman bill and my bill. If you are, not, if you are using a cell phone and it is not hands-free, my interpretation actually would be that my penalties would apply if you are texting while driving down the road. I mean, the, the, the big one chunk of this is penalties if you're caught texting while driving. The other is penalties if you hurt or kill someone. My interpretation uh, is that if you are texting while driving, you are breaking the hands-free, you are breaking hands-free right then and there. And if you kill someone, while you are texting while driving, my understanding is this would apply to you. And to be perfectly blunt, Senator, Osme or Senator uh, Westrom, I think it should. Because if you are rear-ending someone, and that's usually when you, you cause this problem to occur, if you're rear-ending people and killing them while you are texting, 
I definitely think you should be going to jail for a very long time. You have fundamentally changed a family. Not just your family should be paying the penalty, it should be you and people associated with you because this is serious. This is very serious. And uh, Senator Westrom, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, there was a case in McLeod County, um, Ms. Verdeek, or Verdeck, uh, happened a few years ago. And the person was found guilty of driving and texting. It was a clear road, there were conditions were perfect, there was plenty of time to see this, per this lady dri riding a bicycle, and she was killed because that person was texting while driving. So, Senator Westrom, my interpretation is, based on the definition of non-hands-free cell phone use, if you're texting, you're going to be violating the hands-free cell phone use, and you're going to be responsible for that penalty. Senator Westrom. Thank you, uh, Mr. President and uh, Senator Osmick. Uh, that's, that's the language you were saying that got my attention uh, that I wanted clarified. Um, Senator Osmick, I'm not 100% sure yet that uh, that's, it's, it's as clear, but I think what you said is texting, whether it's hands-free or not, uh, is covered under your bill, so there's no chance of doing any texting if you're, if you're driving. Uh, the, the Newman bill that we passed out of here earlier uh, as long as you were not holding your cell phone, but you had the right devices in your phone or in your car, or you had bought uh, modifications uh, to use your cell phone hands free, you could text or make a call. And so, Senator uh, Osmick, uh, that does give me a little concern that we go as far as not allowing a hands free text or call. Uh, if, if that's what you're trying to capture, I guess that's uh, a revelation, and that's why we have good floor debates. But it sounds like you're capturing all, whether it's hands-free or not, you're not discriminating or differentiating, and that's a bit of a concern I'd have with your bill if, if it does go that far. Senator Osmond. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Westrom, just to respond, the same applicability that the Newman bill is the same in my bill. My bill has two two seg segments. One is, if you are texting while driving and you're violating this, you don't hit anybody, here's your penalties. The second part is non-hands-free driving, you get into an accident, you kill someone, here are the penalties. My understanding on texting, if you are using voice activated, because we're using the same exact definitions, if you are using a voice activated text, you don't touch the phone, you are not subject to the fel felony penalties if you kill someone, because you are by definition not violating the hands-free prohibition. So, Senator Westrom, I think this language does have it clarified between the two. Non if you're making a phone call and you are completely hands-free, you are not subject to any of the penalties that I have here. But if you are using this in a non-hands-free setting, if you touch the phone, you're not hands-free, then you are subject to the penalties. Senator Westrom. Very good, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Osmick, I think uh, your last answer got more to the point. Uh, and, and so I just hope uh, as we continue to discuss this, we make sure that differentiation is part of the discussion because we don't want to uh, make it do more or uh, uh, prohibit more actions than we're, we're intending. The intent, and I think your intent is good here, is to make sure the public knows it is time to find different, better ways to use technology if you're going to use, going to use it at all, and in some cases uh, you wouldn't be using it. But um, I wanted to make sure that and your earlier discussion didn't sound like you had the intent to uh, allow even hands-free text or cell phones, and that was inconsistent with what I've uh, discussed with you earlier or uh, looked at the bill before. So uh, I just wanted to make sure that's on the record. I appreciate your last clarification. Further discussion on the bill? Senator Ralph. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, will the Senator yield for a question? Senator Osmick will yield. Senator Ralph. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. President. My question, first of all, is there, there is an exception for GPS, uh, both for the dash mounted and for uh, kind of hands-free, but kind of not. If you're using a cell phone, uh, typically it's necessary, especially if the phone is encrypted, to, in, to input the encrypted encryption to open the phone, and then, in, and then you can voice operate the phone to add the GPS uh, information that you're trying to put in. Can you explain how this bill would affect those situations? Senator Osmond. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Ralph, I don't have any prohibition or exclusion or any language talking about GPS in this bill. So if you are touching and manipulating the cell phone, for, even for a GPS, you would be subject to the penalties in here. However, I'm more than willing. I think Senator Newman's bill has, has been, and now that it's in conference committee, may be having some discussion about that. I'm more than happy to take that as a item that we may want to consider in here. Uh, right now, I don't have it, but it hasn't come up during any of my discussions throughout the process of the bill. Uh, thank Senator you, Mr. Ralph. President. I have some concerns about this bill only because the some of the presuppositions that we have we have engaged in in arriving at the penalties and the type of the structure of the bill, we have to get people to put their hand the, 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 put the phone down. I concern myself, however, that we have equated driving while under the influence of alcohol with using a cell phone, and here's my concern. Driving while under the influence impairs your driving ability totally throughout the whole time that you're in the vehicle. You are unable to function in a responsible manner to operate that vehicle, period. You are impaired. There is a difference between impairment and distraction. While you're distracted, you might be considered impaired, but only from the psychological standpoint that you may not be able to make the decisions as quickly or arrive at that judgment as quickly. But you can arrive at the judgment, and once you've made that judgment, act upon it. For this reason, I am very concerned about applying a felony level penalty to someone who and is engaged in activity that we, sh we don't want them to be engaged in, but that may have been led into an accident, possibly not because of the use of the phone, but because of other circumstances. I'm going to support this bill, but very reluctantly, because I am very concerned about some 17-year-old who wrongfully injures or kills someone being given a felony for the first time, first offense, I feel that we should take into consideration the possibility that there could be some extraneous factors involved. So I, I, I with great caution, tell us, tell, tell, tell this body we need, to, we need to think this through further. And I, I really am concerned about that aspect of it. I feel that the, the distractive driving training is absolutely critical and to totally support that. I totally support the, the, the taking of the driver's license. I think these are things that get to the idea of calling people's attention as to how dangerous this is. So as I indicate, I, I will be supporting this bill, but with some reservations. Thank you. Further discussion on Senate File 75, Senator Thomasoni. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Will Senator Osmick yield? Senator Osmick will yield. Senator Thomasoni. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator, Senator Osmick, I just want to be clear. So you mentioned how your bill would work with Senator Newman's bill. Um, if Senator Newman's bill were not to pass and your bill did pass, if I understand this correctly, then this bill only applies to texting. Is that correct? Senator Osmick. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Senator Tomasotti, no, it doesn't. Uh, this bill would apply to non-hands-free cell phone use, which is the penalty section that I'm putting new penalties, equating it with, drunk, with uh, drunk driving. It also has new and updated penalties for texting while driving. 
and then it's got the last component, which is driver's education. So there's three components to my bill. And if this was put in, and I have heard concerns about this, while well, you're creating something is illegal that isn't necessarily always illegal. Well, you can have a drink or two and, not, and be below the, low, below the legal limit and not trigger the drunk driving laws. Same thing goes with cell phone use. You, you could use it and have a hands, you could use your hands on a cell phone, but if you got into an accident and caused bodily harm or injury, then here are the penalties. So there's a subtle difference between the two. My, suspic my suspicion is both bills will eventually go to the governor's desk, and I hope so. Uh, but they are complementary. They're not necessarily required for both of them to be together. So, Senator Tomasoni. Mr. President, Senator Osmick, let me see if I understood that. So this increases the, te the penalties for texting. And if you are using your cell phone um, for voice act, voice, you're, you're talking on your telephone, and you have your hand on the phone, and you're speaking on the phone, and you get in an accident, that's when you get a penalty for using your cell phone um, in the car and not having it at a hands-free position. Senator Osmick. Correct. Thank you, Mr. President. Any further discussion on Senate File 75? Senator Ralph. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so uh, in response or in exa further examination of this last response, what I understand is if for some reason Senator Newman's bill were not to go forward and this bill were, it appears that we would criminalize a legal activity. That is to say, if I'm driving and I am talking on the cell phone, which under Senator Newman's bill is illegal, but under Senator Osmick, Osmick's bill is not. It's legal to drive while you're talking on the cell phone and you are in an accident and you injure or kill someone, you are going to be charged with a felony level offense for not, for not, 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 for not breaking the law. I, I, have, I have extreme difficulty with that. We are, through the penalty, criminalizing something that is perfectly legal to do. Now, if Senator Newman's bill becomes law, that solves this problem. But I do have deep concerns that we are giving a criminal penalty for a perfectly lawful activity. Thank you. Further discussion on the bill, Senator Latz. Uh, Mr. President, uh, to Senator Ralph's last point, I uh, just want to add a clarification. Um, the current statute for DWIs, um, when you get into an accident and injure someone, you have to be driving negligently and well under the influence of alcohol. So there are two components to it. So it's not simply the act of driving. I assume what Senator Ralph meant was talking on the phone while the phone is in your hand. Uh, which would be the use of a hands-free a hands device, or not using it hands-free. Um, but either way, you still have to drive negligently. Uh, so a jury would have to be convinced that the manner in which you were driving was negligent, in addition to the fact, be convinced that you were using the cell phone in a manner that was not hands-free. Further discussion on the bill? Seeing none, the Secretary will give Senate File 75 its third reading. Senate File Number 75, a bill for an act relating to public safety. Third reading. Any final discussion on Senate File 75? Seeing no further discussion, the Secretary will take the roll on Senate File 75.
All senators having voted who have the desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 56 ayes and 9 nays, the bill is passed and it's titled agreed to. Members, the next bill up for consideration is number 84 on general orders, Senate file 558, Senator Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. Senate file 558 is a very straightforward bill. It deals with bid protests. I uh, just want to be clear, there are no policy changes with this area, but it simply clarifies uh, this area of law. Due to a recent case that came out of the Rochester area, uh, there's a little bit of, of a question of whether cases, bid protest cases, should be brought to the appeals court or they should be uh, down in the uh, original court jurisdiction, should be down at the trial court level. What this bill does uh, is simply states that those types of cases should be brought down to the trial court level. level. This is a bar association bill uh, that was heard in, in judiciary and, and made its way here to the floor. Uh, so with that, I'm, I'm open to questions. Discussion on Senate File 558. Seeing no discussion, the Secretary will give Senate File 558 its third reading. Senate File Number 558, a bill for an act relating to state government. Third reading. Any final discussion on Senate File 558? Members were on final passage of Senate File 558. Seeing no further discussion, the Secretary will take the roll. All senators having voted who have the desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 66 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and it's titled agreed to. The next bill up for consideration is number 24 on general orders, House File 819, Senator Nelson. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, House File 819, or Senate File 996, uh, has to do with our cardiovascular technologists, otherwise known as CVTs. I thank this, our, my co-sponsors, Senators Klein, Abler, Hayden, and Jensen. This is a bipartisan bill that uh, clarifies existing Department of Health regulations uh, to allow cardiovascular technologists, also called CVTs, to continue providing the critical care and support services to cardiologists, treating patients in our cardiac cath labs. These are at hospitals across the state. Uh, we uh, have not had any opposition to this committee, and I want to uh, emphasize this is not a scope of practice change. It simply clarifies existing practice. Uh, the Minnesota Department of Health uh, has uh, asked for this clarification. Uh, it's of a timely nature that we uh, get this uh, completed, and um, I would uh, stand for any questions. Discussion on House File 819. Seeing no discussion, the Secretary will give House File 819 its third reading. House File number 819, a bill for an act relating to health. Third reading. Any final discussion on House File 819? Members were on final passage of House File 819. Seeing no further discussion, the Secretary will take the roll.
All senators having voted who have the desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 65 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. The next bill up for consideration is number 14 on general orders, House File 608, Senator Thomasoni. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I move that the amendment made to House File number 608 by the Committee on Rules and Administration in the report adopted March 13, 2019, pursuant to Rule 45, be stricken. Senator Thomasoni, to that motion. Mr. President, this is just uh, um, taking the House language and using the House language. The, uh, the, the, we made a change in the Senate bill that they didn't make in the House language. The, the change is, uh, is um, something that's very, very minor. And in order to expedite the bill, it makes sense just to take the House language, Mr. President. Any discussion on the Thomasoni motion? Senator Hall. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, President. Um, the Thomas Honey bill is um, exactly what he said. It uh, changes just a few things, and the House had a little better option there, and we're going to take that and go with it. Went through our committee, local government, without any question at all. So uh, we would hope to pass this. Any further discussion on the Thomas Honey motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion prevails. Senator Thomasoni, to the thank, bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, um, House File 608 has been in front of the body um, last year. It passed out of here on a 61 to 0 vote. Um, didn't get, uh, didn't make it through the, the House floor. Um, but it is uh, an attempt to to um, modernize the St. Louis County civil service uh, laws. Uh, the the employment laws that um, that uh, St. Louis County is working under were created in 1941. They are basically obsolete, and this proposed legislation represents years of work to, ach to achieve labor management consensus necessary to move it forward and has the support not only of the county board, but also has the support of all 11 of their collective bargaining units. This employment system statute is unique to St. Louis County, which is why the authors are Senator Bach, myself, and Senator Simonson, because we represent St. Louis County and will not affect any other county, city, or any other local unit of government in Minnesota. So all the stakeholders have been included in drafting the bill and have had numerous meetings held to examine the bill, and there's no, no opposition to this bill. So I would appreciate your support again. Discussion on House File 608. Senator Hall. Thank you, Mr. President. Again, uh, because it was Thomasoni's bill, we took a really deep view of this to make sure it was really good and he wasn't trying to slide something in there, so I would uh, encourage passage. Any further discussion on the bill? Seeing none, the Secretary will give House File 608 its third reading. House File, numbers, House file number 608, a bill for an act relating to local government. Third reading. Any final discussion on the bill? Members were on final passage of House File 608. Seeing no further discussion, the Secretary will take the roll. All senators having voted who have the desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 65 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. Remaining under motions and resolutions, we'll move to the 13th order of business, announcements of Senate interest. Without objection, the following senators will be excused from today's session. Senator Eaton all day, Senator Cohn from 11.30 to 11.45 and 11.50 to the end of session. 
Members' announcements of Senate interest. Senator Eichhorn. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to make a, another plug for the hottest ticket in town tomorrow evening, the Ranger Party. So if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, uh, you can get them at Senator Pratt's desk with Pat Calusa, or you can get them at Senator Tomasoni's desk with Laura Bach. Uh, for the lobbyists in the gallery, they're invited as well, and uh, you folks can certainly swing by our desks as well and get a ticket. We'd love to see you all tomorrow night. It's the greatest bipartisan, hottest ticket in town, so please join us. Senator Franzen. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to acknowledge the two teams in Edina uh, for hockey teams that uh, ended up being the 2019 State High School Class II Hockey Championships for the, both girls and boys, and we have resolutions that were introduced today, and we're going to host them later on this afternoon in the rotunda around 3 o'clock, so if anyone wants to be around here and, and congratulate the teams, they'll be here, and they will also be honored in the other chamber. Thank you. Senator Clausen. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to remind members that this Thursday is Zoo Day at the Capitol, and on, from 1.30 to 3 o'clock, there'll be staff members and a number of animals that they'll bring bringing to the Capitol. It's always a great event for members and staff, so I just wanted to make sure that people were aware of that and hope to see you there this Thursday. Thank you. Members, any other announcements of Senate interest? Senator Franzen. Thank you, Mr. President, and I miss one team. I'm sorry, we had a good run this year. The Edina um, Girls 2019 State High School Class AA Boys Swimming and Diving Championship. So again, another team in my district, and I, you know, I, I got to brag, so thank you. Members, any other announcements or teams? Senator Gazelka. Mr. President, I move the Senate do now adjourn until Wednesday, April 10th at 12 p.m. Senator Gazelka moves that the Senate do now adjourn until Wednesday, April 10th, 2019 at 12 noon. All those in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion prevails. The Senate is adjourned.